welcome to all Caribbean entrepreneurs. If you've been ready and waiting to take your business digital and get paid online while you sip something strong on the beach, this podcast is for you. We'll hear from the Caribbean's finest entrepreneurs on topics like e-commerce, business development, brand building, social media, their wins and failures. This is the only place in the region helping you navigate the digital age from the Caribbean's perspective. This is Digipreneur FM. And now, let's give it up for the Digiboss himself, Mr. Karan Rose. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody tuning in to another episode of the Digipreneur FM podcast. And as usual, it is your boy, Mr. Rose, back again with another Wonderful, wonderful episode for the people. But first, DJ, you got to fade us all the way out, DJ. You got to fade us all the way out because we got to talk to the people. We have yet another exciting, informative, gem-dropping gem episode. <laughs> this is episode number 102, and... It is September 24th, 2022. And I feel like, and I feel like I haven't done this in a while because we had a busy, busy um, the last week and a half, last almost two weeks, has been a pretty, pretty busy. Yeah, so our last episode was just about, just about 11 days ago. Yeah, so we had a, we had a, we had some fun time. So... The since our last episode, we flew out to the Bahamas. Um, we did a workshop, not a workshop, but we were part of the, the, the flow business or the BTC business innovation conference out in the Bahamas, and that was that was lovely. That was lovely. I had a great, great time. Um, it's amazing to, to get out into the other islands physically. Getting out there, being able to not just, you know, see the landscape and talk to the local people, but like you just get to see a lot of things, um, you know, what's happening or not happening when you are physically there. And um, I'm not going to lie, it really it really opened up my eyes and wet my appetite to start to start traveling to um, more of the Caribbean islands to really, you know, see what's going on if you guys are hearing a rooster in the background that's jimmy jimmy is you know letting everybody know that it's time to get up <laughs> i don't know if the mic is picking him up right now but i'm hearing him loud and clear but don't worry man don't don't worry about the rooster. don't worry about jimmy in the background all right so yeah so it was it was really good just to to get out there and just see the landscape and there's just so many little th little things that i picked up on like from the moment I landed in the airport, there was like 10 other flights that flew into the Bahamas. Same time, the airport is packed and everybody is a tourist, um, you know, and, you, and you know, the minute everybody lands, everybody's connecting to their Wi-Fi. Um, and you're just seeing, just hearing the conversations, everybody's planning, you know, where they're going, what they're trying to see, the hotels they're staying at, the food. Um, so there's just a lot of conversations that you're hearing. And I think one of the best things about Bahamas is that, you know, if you live in the Bahamas, you have access to, you know, every day, whether it's the cruise ships or the flights, every single day, hundreds of thousands of people are landing on your shores, you know, for a, a various amounts of time. And there are basic, basic, basic things that... If the business owners there were to put in place, they could easily double their traffic and double or triple their revenue, you know. So part of the workshop that I was going out there to do was on market research, right? Um, showing people how to do, you know, some market research to really kind of understand their demographics and what's happening in the industry. And when I was looking at, now Bahamas is big on food, right? So when I was doing... Um, some research, some some live research in the theater. 
while I'm doing the the research on stage and I'm looking up restaurants and I'm kind of doing some some research on restaurants and food. When we start looking at the restaurants, the, one of the number one searches that are popping up for restaurants in the Bahamas is restaurants near me. Now, that's significant because what it meant is that, you know, people are landing in the Bahamas and they're typing in restaurants near me so that it could pop up on Google search, the Google Maps, to show them what are all the restaurants in their vicinity. And then they could check out the menu, they could check out the photos, and then they, or they could walk to it or get a drive to it, however. But if your business, you know, doesn't have, like, the bare minimum of... Uh, Google business so that you could even show up on a Google search and that you could show up on Google Maps, then you're missing out because if that's the number one, if that's the number one search command happening on Google right now in the Bahamas, if you're not showing up, then you don't exist. Remember, people, people are just visiting. They don't know where you are. They don't know who you are. And if you're not leveraging all of the features of Google Business. So if you're not putting in the photos, the videos, putting in your menu, connecting to, you know, the reservation um, features of, of Google Business. If you're not putting in all of those things, if you're not encouraging people to leave the reviews on Google Business, remember, the Google Business is the only platform where the reviews have, you know, benefits beyond just leaving a review. So when you leave a review on Google Business, that also helps with your search rankings, right? So if people are getting to leave the reviews, it help, gives you a bump in the search rankings. But then it also you're 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 showing up in in the number one place that everybody goes to get information. And remember, tourists are landing there, and their first instinct is to Google things. That's just our natural first instinct when we go anywhere, right? So there's um like. I would get a lot of conversations happening in some of the comments of, of a lot of my content or people are like, oh, uh, my my customers don't use, they're not, they're not going to Google, they're not using the website or whatever. And it's like your specific customer, because it's usually not all of them, right? <laughs> you might have customers who don't go on the website and they would rather do business with you in person, no problem. We have to keep in mind that's not everybody. And worse, when you are living in the Caribbean that is just a known tourist destination for, you know, a variety of reasons, you have to keep in mind that the tourists and the foreigners coming in don't know you, don't know who you are, don't know where you are, don't know nothing about you. And if you don't have any of these tools and systems put in place, they're never going to be able to find you or ever do business with you. All right. So just going to Bahamas and just seeing, you know, again, the landscape, seeing, you know, what what's going on with the local businesses, you know, seeing uh, the amount of tourists that come in, you know, being able to do the workshops out there, um, getting there to do some of the research that I did um, was really, really eye opening. And I, I can't wait um, for the next one, <laughs> I can't wait for the next workshop in another Caribbean country. I, again, it whet my appetite, uh, and I, and I had a lot of fun. The food was amazing. The, the workshop was amazing. The people are amazing. And there's so much opportunity, um, throughout the entire Caribbean region. It really is untapped potential, but I'm trying to tap in. <laughs> I'm trying to tap in. I'm trying to tap all the way in. <laughs> so... Uh, episode 102, what are we here for? What are we talking about today? What are we talking about today? So, this episode, I wanted to talk about how I use various payment tools, like how I use PayPal, how I use Payoneer, how I use WISE, how I use WePay, you know, I'm going to throw in the bank's e-commerce solutions a little bit. Um, and the reason why I want to have this conversation today, now this this is one of those conversations where um, usually, not every time, but I usually like to make my points and write things down. But I woke up this morning 
And I wasn't going to do a podcast episode today. I was actually going to, you know, take this week off and, you know, start fresh next week, hype, pumped, ready to go. But I woke up with this one on my chest. I woke up with it on my brain because um, two days ago, I would have done some content, some video content on TikTok um, and put that out across, you know, TikTok, uh, Instagram, LinkedIn. And that was around how to use WISE with PayPal to deposit the funds into any bank account. Now, you have to keep in mind that um, for the most part, when we were trying to receive money, especially here in Trinidad and Tobago, um, PayPal only connected with a couple of banks. So yeah, it would it would connect with JMB, PSCU Credit Union, uh, Venture Credit Union. Uh, who else am I missing? I'm missing I'm missing somebody. I'm missing oh, and and Visa credit cards, right? So it would only have connected to to those institutions because those institutions were giving out a Visa debit card that was not connected to our local links network. And the local links network, all the banks use them. Scotia Bank, RBC, Republic, FCB, they all use the Lynx network. So even though they have a Visa debit card, it's in partnership with, with, with Infolink, the company that, that created the Lynx network. And the Lynx network blocks um, these cards from using PayPal, right? So we can never connect it to PayPal to use to make purchases. And because we can't connect it, we can't use it to receive money. So there was just a very limited amount of banks that you could use to receive your funds from PayPal, right? And I got, I'm late to the dance. Like I was told, I can't even say I was late. I know I'm late, I was late. I was told, man, maybe two years ago about TransferWise, which is now rebranded as the company Wise. Um, I was told about them um, right around the same time I was told about Payoneer, right? And... Whilst I created accounts with them, I never used them because, again, you're just trying to, you're trying to see where you're going to use things or whatever, right? And because I was having the funds deposited to uh, my JMB account, and I stopped using JMB too much because I'm, I think all the banks in Trinidad are very shaky. <laughs> so, um. I I was started I started to put my PayPal money I was putting it to my credit card but the thing is when you are putting your money when you are depositing the funds to your credit card um, there's problems with that because if your money that you deposit goes over let's just say you 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 have a zero balance on your credit card right so if your balance is if your balance is five thousand dollars um, and you have a again you have you have zero balance on your card. If you deposit the money on your card and it goes over, your, it goes over your limit. So if your limit is five thousand, you deposit money in the card and it goes over, the banks charge you a percentage for you for you having more money than your limit. They charge you a percentage on that, right? And it's not small too. It's it's a it's a sizable amount of money for 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 having more money in your card than your limit. They charge you for that. And then if you want the cash, like if you actually want the physical cash and you want to withdraw that, they charge you a cash advance fee, right? So there's, there, to me, it's expensive to, to have, um, you know, if, you, if you're making constant, consistent money coming off of your, uh, if you're making consistent money from PayPal, um, to me, it's just not beneficial to put the money to your credit card. I mean, unless you're using it to, to, as a payment or whatever, but to me, it's not beneficial to put the money to your credit card. It's better to put it into your bank account, right? But it was only so few banks that would connect in Trinidad. So Payoneer and Wise, these are virtual bank accounts that would connect to PayPal, and you can withdraw the money from your PayPal and have it deposited to your Payoneer or your Wise account, and then because Payoneer and Wise are virtual banks, they would essentially wire transfer the money to to any local bank account that you have anywhere in the world, right? Now, the thing with Payoneer and PayPal is that uh, beginning of 2022 or end of 2021, somewhere there, uh, PayPal made the announcement that you would no longer be allowed to connect your Payoneer accounts 
to PayPal, right? So if you were somebody who connected Payoneer, you know, before this year, then, you, you know, you were good, right? You could use Payoneer to receive your money from PayPal and, you know, do what you got to do. But because they stopped that, um, I'm one of the ones where I signed up my PayPal. Uh, I signed up my PayPal last year, but I never connected it to PayPal. And when I tried to do it this year, um, that's when I learned about, you know, PayPal no longer accepting Payoneer accounts, right? So I just kind of left it alone. But uh, last week, I decided to finally sign up for Wise because, again, I wanted to see, you know, I wanted to go about getting my PayPal money deposited into my business account. So that's the other thing, too. All of the banks that would give you, that was going to give you a Visa debit card, right, or your credit card, the Visa debit cards that they were giving are only connected to personal accounts, right? So they are only connected to personal savings or personal checking accounts. Now, that's a problem for business owners because business owners want whatever money that the business is making, they want that deposited to their business account, right? And we were unable to do that when it came to depositing funds um, with the banks that we had, JMB, PSCU, Venture Credit Union, you know, there is no business accounts that we could deposit the funds to. So the thing with WISE, because WISE and Payoneer, because we can connect our business accounts, right? We connect our business accounts through the wire transfer information or the SWIFT network. Um, we, can do, we can get the information for our business accounts, and then we can have Payoneer or WISE forward that money into our business account. So that way, when we're getting paid online from businesses or companies we're doing work with, that money is going into our business accounts, right? So um, that's the best, that's major. That's huge, right? That is huge for um, people across the entire Caribbean because people can go and sign up for Wise, and they can now connect that to PayPal, and and Wise will you know forward the money to the local bank accounts. That's huge. And if you're here in Trinidad and Tobago, you know people who have been you know asking you know well why. You know, why should I use pay? Why should I use PayPal? Right. You know, why wouldn't I just, you know, use we pay or use something else? So this is why I kind of wanted to do the episode, because I kind of wanted to break down, you know, why I use each of these particular services. So you guys understand there is no one service in Trinidad and Tobago that you can use. You literally have to sign up with all of them because all of them are used for different scenarios and different situations. And that's the thing that. I, I absolutely hate, like, when I get comments on my content and people are like, oh, well, why would I use this? Why would I use that? Or no, don't use this. You know, I, I would just use something else. And it's like, yo, shut up. Like, you guys don't understand what on earth we are talking about. And you're in the comments telling people what to, what to use, what not to use, but you don't get it. Like, we literally have to have everything. When people ask me what is better, what it like, nothing is better. We you have to have everything. Like to me, WePay is not better than PayPal. PayPal is not better than Wise. Wise isn't better than Pay. None of that. None of that matters. It doesn't matter because you need everything. You need everything. You need everything because everything has its use and purpose and scenario. But then again, if you're not making money the way that a lot of other people are making money or doing business the way that other people are doing business, then, yeah, you might not need everything because you're not doing the things that we are doing. But I just need you to not be in my comments telling people what to use, what not to use, and da-da-da. When people ask me about, you know, the fees of things, to me, the fees don't matter. It don't matter because we don't have a ton of options where you can say, in this scenario, you could use, you know, you have five options for this scenario. So now you can look at the fees. No, we literally have like for different scenarios, and I'm going to get through it. We literally have different scenarios where there's really only one option. And when there's only one option, you asking me about the fees to do this or, or people, people jump in the comments and say, oh, that sounds expensive. That's too expensive for me. The option for you is not doing online business. We're not selling online. And that's not an option for me. That's not an option for anybody. And that's stupid if you think that I'm not going to use PayPal. It's too expensive. But then you have no option, right? So let me, break, let, me, let me go through it, right? 
So let me, again, so how I'm, how I'm going to kind of break this down, I'm going to go through each of the different payment tools, and I'm just going to give you the scenarios that I use them. I'm not going into fees. That's what their websites are for. You guys can go on their websites, look up all their fees. I don't care about fees because we don't have options to do a lot of the things that we need to do. So whether I like the fee or not, doesn't matter. I still have to use it, all right? That's just my thinking. You, if you think differently, go ahead. But if you want information about the fees, go on their website. I will not be answering questions about fees. Anyway, let's get to it. So how do I use PayPal? PayPal, whether you like PayPal or not, PayPal is a must-have. Like, you need to have PayPal. You need to use PayPal, right? How I use PayPal is... There are companies that I work with abroad. So this is one thing you have to understand. Not everybody you do business with is going to pay you through a credit card, right? The reason why PayPal is the number one platform that everybody uses, that most people use globally, is that PayPal allows you to connect your bank accounts. So when you're dealing with companies who have connected their bank accounts to PayPal and they're paying out their 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 vendors or suppliers or paying for works and services from their bank accounts. You can't tell a company, oh, um, I'm going to send you an invoice. Can you pay me with credit card? And the company turns on and says, well, no, we don't pay it. We don't, we don't pay out through credit card. We pay out through PayPal. And that's because their bank accounts are connected to PayPal. So you can't tell a company how to pay you. If you're doing service, if you're doing work with a big company abroad and they're telling you, well, we can pay out through PayPal because, our, like I said, our, our, our bank accounts are connected or maybe they're using Payoneer because their bank accounts are connected, then you need to be able to accept that form of payment or, that, or, or use that platform that they're paying out from because, again, a lot of the companies are not using credit cards to pay you. So... Not having access to PayPal, not having access to Payoneer, that is huge for us in the Caribbean because you're missing out on, on, doing, on doing some some good business abroad, right? And so when you are talking about, oh, well, PayPal's too expensive or I don't like PayPal, that's all fine and dandy, but if the company is telling you I only we only pay out through PayPal, and you're coming back with, oh, well, you know, can I can I send you an invoice and you pay with credit card or can you wire transit? The company just tells you no and they go find somebody else. <laughs> and I, I'm saying all of this because this is the comments. These are the comments. These are the comments. Oh, well, uh, or people, these are either the comments or the questions. People telling me, oh, hey, you know, uh, I'm trying to get the company to pay me with wire transfer because I don't have paper. They're not going to do it. They're just not going to do it. They're just going to get somebody else. So this is why you need you need a PayPal, right? Their bank accounts are connected to a PayPal, right? And they pay out through their bank accounts. This is why you need PayPal, okay? Like them or not, fees don't matter. If the, ba- if the company is paying you through PayPal, this is one of the main reasons. Their bank accounts are connected. So the money that they are paying you is coming directly from their bank account. They are not going to pay you through a credit card. Okay. So for companies, like there are companies that I have signed up with and I get affiliate payments from. There are companies abroad that I do services with. And again, their bank accounts are connected to PayPal. Um, I have PayPal there uh, to be able to accept those payments, accept my affiliate payments, um, it's it's a must have, right? It's a must have. So this is why you know Wise is 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 huge because before, um, when the money was going into my JMB account, again that's a personal account. We we JMB does not give a Visa debit card. They don't give a card period to their business accounts. They only give out the cards to personal accounts. So that money I was making for my services was going into a personal account. That's not good for business, right? Um, and then, um, you know, the money was going to my credit card again, not good. It's expensive to, if you want cash, uh, it's expensive to pull the money out. If your card has a, 
you know, zero balance and you, you have a fresh limit and your limit is $5,000 and, and that money that comes in goes over the limit. The banks charge you a percentage for how much money you have gone over the limit. So that's not good. I, I don't like that either. Ideally, I want my money that comes in for my business services. I want that going into a business account. So I don't use Payoneer and PayPal because PayPal stopped allowing uh, Payoneer accounts to connect to PayPal. So Wise was the next best option. But guess what? Wise is the only service that I know of that we have access to in Trinidad and Tobago and the rest of the Caribbean that is a virtual bank account that you can connect to PayPal that will then wire transfer or, or use the SWIFT network to deposit those funds into your local business accounts. The good thing with WISE as well is that once you get the, the, um, the wire information or the, or the SWIFT information from your banks for your accounts, if you want to keep the funds in U.S. currency, once you have a U.S. A US bank account, a U.S. currency account with your bank, you can get the information, the wire information for the U.S. account. And if you want to keep those funds in USD, then that's the account you set up with WISE. So the funds come in because, remember, PayPal processes everything in USD. WISE, you can create a U.S. account. The good thing with WISE is that WISE allows you to create multiple currency accounts if you want. So if you want to collect pounds, if you want to collect, you know, whatever other currency that they, that they offer... You can collect those currencies, but you know, you, we, we, we predominantly use U.S. So I created the U.S. cash account. So the money from PayPal is collected in U.S. dollars. It goes into my Wise, uh, my Wise bank account. Um, it stays in U.S. and I have that money deposited into my local U.S. account at Scotia Bank, And all those funds stays in U.S. currency. And then from there, I could then make the decision. You know, do I want now if you guys are in Trinidad and Tobago, you guys know we have restrictions on U.S. So you guys get to make the option or you guys have the option. You know, do you want to if, if you have links in the bank and you can withdraw your U.S. No problem. Great. Go ahead. If you like the rest of us that don't have links and you have to go and apply to take out U.S. and whatnot, um, you know, do what you got to do. But you have the option now to say, hey, um, <laughs> convert my U.S. and convert it into TT dollars. And then pull out the TT. So more, more often than not, I just like the option. You know, I like the option that I, can, that I have U.S. there and I can then make the decision. Do I want to keep U.S. or do I want to convert the, the, the U.S. into TT dollars and then I could, you know, pull out the TT dollars and whatnot, right? So if you're in the comments talking about, oh, well, why would I do that? Because, you know, getting U.S. out is, is so hard and they're not giving us you. I don't care. Like, that's up to you. You make the decision. You can either set up, so you can set up your WISE account and you can have it deposited directly to your TT account. And then once that US hits your bank, your bank will automatically convert it to TT. No problem. Like you have that option. You have the option to keep the funds in US if you want. And if the funds go into your US account, you once again have the option of keeping the money in your bank account in US or converting it to TT. You have the options. I don't understand. If you guys can hear the frustration in my voice, it's because hundreds of, D of DMs come in and, you, and, and people message me about useless, useless, senseless nonsense. Don't talk to me about the problems of US. I don't care. You have the option. Set up, deposit the funds to your TT account. Good, no problem. If, you, if the funds go into your U.S. account, you have the option of converting it to TT. Don't message me. I don't care. Complain to your family and friends. Complain to your teddy bear about, about the U.S. I do not care. Because guess what? My money goes into my U.S. account, and I make the decision. Do I want TT? Okay, I'll take out TT. Do I want to keep it in U.S.? Okay, cool. It stays in U.S. I get to make the decision. The only thing I complain about is is that I can't do the, I can't, you know, move the money from US to TT online. I complain about that. But I don't complain about the fact that the bank isn't giving me US. Like, I don't, at this point, I don't care. Right? You can make the decision and whatnot. Because if I have suppliers that I have to pay, I can wire the money out. Like, there are things that I can do. There are options. Like, you can keep the money in your, in your WISE account and you can wire that money to your suppliers. 
right? So there's options. If you want to, if you want to, if you want to to pay suppliers around the world and they accept wire transfers, you can use Wise and wire the money to your to your vendors if they accept wire transfers, right? So you guys have to know the vendors and business owners that you are that you are dealing with, right? So I use PayPal for that, right? Now for WePay, WePay I use, um, I predominantly use WePay if people want to pay me with credit card. So uh, PayPal's, I don't send out invoices with PayPal because PayPal's um, transaction fee is 5.4%. If people pay me with, if people pay me through um, PayPal, 5.4% in US dollars, right? To me, that's, to me, that doesn't make no sense, right? So I would rather send my international clients, regional clients, anybody, you can send them, I use WePay. I send them a WePay invoice. WePay charges me three per three point, I think one percent, um, plus three dollars TT per transaction. That's much cheaper than using a PayPal um, to send invoices and and have people pay you through a credit card, right? So if people are going to pay me through a credit card, I would send them a WePay invoice, and that is going to be cheaper because I'm getting charged in TT in, in TT dollars. I'm getting charged in TT currency, so it's cheaper. And it goes into my WePay wallet, and then the, the the money gets deposited into your local bank account within three to seven business days. Um, that WePay says, right? Some people complain, oh, the 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 wait time for WePay is too long. Well, guess what? There are many people that are using PayPal and they are stuck on thirty day holds. And PayPal only deposits their, their funds once a month. That's the first of every month. And then they have to wait for PayPal to do that. So, again, you guys need to balance out what you guys are about, right? If you don't want to use WePay because you're like, hey, I can't. <laughs> I, it's, I don't, the wait time is too long um, to get my money. I can't wait three to seven business days. Then you're more than welcome to go sign up with the banks. The banks have their own e-commerce solutions that they've white labeled from Figaro, right? But guess what? In order to use the solutions from, or in order to use the bank solutions, the bank is going to charge you. Um, if you want to send, if you want to send invoices, the bank is charging you 15 US a month to be able to send the invoices, right? So you can sign up for their. Uh, like if you're in Trinidad, there's Republic ePay, FCB EasyBiz, there's the Scotia Ecom Plus. They start their plans start at 15 US per month, and you're going to be able to send out. Uh, you can send out your your invoices and get paid um, from there, and then they deposit the funds. Your funds show up in your bank account within 24 to 48 hours. So there's that option as well. WePay doesn't charge you a monthly fee, right? WePay just charges you the transaction fee. So with the banks, the banks are charging you a monthly fee and are charging you a transaction fee. And when you guys sign up, the banks are gonna ch- are gonna set you up with either three to five percent of uh, per transaction fee, right? That's something that you would work out with the banks. But that is three to five percent uh, per transaction, fee, and it's in U.S. dollars. Their fee, fifteen U.S. to start their starting plan for a public ePay, FCB, EasyBiz, uh, Scotia Ecom Plus. That's all in U.S. dollars. Plus, you have the transaction fees, right? So, yes, it's going to kick your bank account faster, 24 to 48 hours, but then you have more fees. It's more expensive. So you need to weigh all of those things out. So for me, when I'm sending out invoices to international clients, um, whether they're local or international, I use WePay, send out the invoices. They can pay me with credit card. Um, it's three, 3.1% plus $3 TT per transaction. Um, the money shows up in my business account within three to seven business days um, that I make the, re- with the, the when I make the withdrawal request from WePay, right? So that's how I use WePay. If you want to use the bank services, no problem. But like I said, they, their fees start at 15 US just for the invoicing feature. And then they have a bunch of other services and the prices go up. You guys can go and check out their websites and go learn all about the, those uh, those platforms, right? But again, the fees are more expensive, so you need to know where you are in your business. WePay has no monthly fee, and you can get started for free. And if you make no sales this month, I mean that month, guess what? You don't pay WePay. You only pay per transaction when a transaction happens. So you guys need to balance that out. 
Now, what else is there? So, uh, there is PayPal. There's I talked about Wise. I talked about Payoneer. So, Payoneer. So, let me let me let me break down how I use Payoneer. Payoneer, even though Payoneer does not connect, um, does not connect to PayPal anymore. I use Payoneer because I get paid Amazon affiliates, right? So, when Amazon affiliates is paying out, Amazon pays out either via check, they'll cut you a check in US dollars, or if you want to do direct deposit, you can connect your Payoneer account to Amazon Associates. And Amazon Associates will send the money to your Payoneer virtual bank. And then once that money hits your Payoneer, um, remember, you, you're going to be the one connecting whatever bank you want um, to Payoneer. And then Payoneer will forward that money to that bank account. So that is that is how I use Payoneer. I predominantly use Payoneer to collect all of my Amazon affiliate money. I don't want to wait for a check. If you're in the Caribbean, you know that the local uh, post office services is pretty trash. I don't want to wait for snail mail for a check. I would rather, and I don't want it to get lost in the mail either. All right, that's the other thing. So I would much rather direct deposit. So I connect my Payoneer account to my Amazon affiliates, aka Amazon Associates. Once the payout happens, they forward the money to my Payoneer wallet, and then Payoneer deposits the money into my local bank account. And that is how I get direct deposits from Amazon, and that is pretty much how I use Payoneer, right? There, Payoneer has a bunch of other services that you guys can use. You guys can go and check them out. I'm only talking about how I use it, right? So you guys can go check out Payoneer, go on their website, they offer a wide variety of services. I use it to collect my Amazon affiliate money. All right. So talk PayPal. We talk Payoneer. We talked Wise. I use Wise to connect to PayPal um, to deposit the funds into my business account. Uh, we pay. I send you know the invoices to my international clients and who who want to pay me with a credit card. Then you guys could also go and check out the bank services. Now the 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 next thing, but this is this is more so. This is this one is just for Trinidad. Uh, we know that Paywise has has come back out, and they've just launched their app as of yesterday, September twenty third. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and check out their app. I'm gonna check out their app because you're gonna be able to. It's uh, the way I, the way I'm seeing it. The way I'm seeing it being advertised right now. Let me see if I can pull it up real quick. So there's not too much information available on Paywise app yet, but they did release a photo. Um, and on the photo, what I'm seeing is you can send money, you can request money. They have a QR code, so I'm guessing you're going to be able to scan that to make payments. Um, there's a cash out, so you're going to be able to connect your Paywise app to a local bank account and the money will go to your bank account. There is bank transfer. I'm guessing that's probably how you're going to be able to load the wallet. Um, there is a top up and then you can also pay bills. So not a whole lot of information on the Paywise app, but I'm definitely going to be checking it out. And again, the thing with these things, right? The thing with, the thing with apps, because there's Republic and cash, um, now with the new Paywise wallet is everybody has to be using this in order for it to make sense. Right. And I haven't met a business that um, has even promoted that they're using NCash so that it made sense for me to even download it and use it. I personally do not know anybody of all the people that I know. And I know, I know, a, I know a good bit of people now. Of all the people that I know, I don't know anybody using Republic Bank's NCash. So because I don't know anybody using it, it doesn't make sense for me to use because who am I sending and receiving money from if I don't know, you know, if I don't know anybody using it, right? So these things, uh, these apps, because it's a closed network, they work, you know, based on mass adoption. And so the more people that jump on these platforms and use it, then, then the, you know, the value of it goes up. But if you don't know anybody that is using it, who are you sending and receiving money from, all right? And then to pay bills, like I'm not like me personally, I'm not loading money onto the Paywise app to go and pay bills. To me, that is, to me, to me, that don't make no sense. 
But here's why. For me, right? For me, it doesn't make no sense because all of my bills are registered to my bank accounts, my online banking. So I go into my online bank and I pay all my bills directly from my bank accounts, right? I register all the bills. I pay all of them from... I'm not going to go and load money onto um, an app and then go and pay. That doesn't make no sense. Now, if you are somebody who is part of the unbanked, and you do not have a bank account, right? And you do not want to go and line up in uh, in a Digicel or in a Flow or in TN Tech, or if you do not want to go and line up to go and pay bills, right? Um, you know, then you could go and load up your Paywise wallet or your NCash wallet. You can load these things up at the various uh, endpoints where you can you know, uh, load up your accounts and then you have your balance on your mobile wallets and then you can make your payments, pay your bills from there. That would make sense, right? So if you are unbanked and you do not have a bank account, then yes, it'll make sense to go and put money on your mobile wallet using Paywise and that way you can pay your bills or you can send money. It'll make sense at that point, right? Like if you, if you don't have a bank account. But if you do have a bank account and you are using online banking or even if you have a credit card and you're visiting the company's website and making the payments, then it doesn't make sense to go and load money onto a mobile wallet app to go and pay bills. So I'm going to go check it out. I'll definitely check it out. I'm all, I also need to check out NCash as well. I think the first time the first time I had downloaded NCash when it just came out. The app was just so clunky, wasn't user friendly. It kept freezing, like it kept closing. I deleted that thing as soon as I as soon as I installed it was as soon as I uninstalled it. Right? It was just it was a mess. But I have heard people, I've I've have seen people online say it has gotten better uh, from the launch, which is cool. So I'm definitely gonna check it out. I still don't know anybody personally using it, so. Um, for me, it's just going to be just to check it out, just to see what the features are. But uh, I don't know anybody personally using it, so it's not going to be overly beneficial for me if people need to send me money and whatnot. Or who knows? Maybe I could influence people around me. Hey, download NCash and teach them how to use it. <laughs> I don't know. We'll, <laughs> we will see how that goes, right? We'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes. But um, yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. I just wanted to kind of... Um, break down the, the scenarios and how I use the different various platforms. Like I said, I don't entertain the conversation of what is better. Is 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 PayPal better than WePay? Is WePay better than Wise? Is that's a that's a it's it's a non-starter for me because nothing is better than anything because you need all of them for all the different scenarios. I cannot connect PayPal to my Amazon Associates. I would, the only other option for me is to collect collect my Amazon affiliate money through a check. I don't want checks. So it connects to Payoneer and that's the only other payment platform that it connects to. So I have to use Payoneer, right? I have to use PayPal because the companies, for the most part, that pay me affiliate commissions or pay me for services that use PayPal because their bank accounts are connected to PayPal, I have to use PayPal, right? And I want the money going into my local bank account, so I have to use WISE. You see what I'm saying? There is no option. There is no choices. You just have to use what you are given. So I don't fuss up about what the fees are. Doesn't matter. I would still need to use Payoneer. I don't fuss up about PayPal because I still need to use PayPal. I don't fuss about WePay because I still need to use WePay. <laughs> Right? At least with WePay, like at least if you want to accept credit card payments, you know, you could go to the bank and use the bank services or you could use WePay. But then again, right, WePay doesn't charge a monthly fee. Yes, you wait three to seven days for your money, but then again, you have to balance out. You don't wait. I mean, sorry, you don't pay a monthly fee. If you want to have your money deposited within 24 to 48 hours, then go pay the bank's fees. If banks have a nice little e-commerce solution where you could send out digital invoices, your international clients can pay with credit cards just like we pay, but you have a monthly fee plus you have transaction fees. So you have to determine what's going to make sense for you in that scenario. For me, I don't mind using WePay. I don't mind waiting the three to seven business days because at the end of the day, I don't have to pay a monthly fee. Right, I just pay the, per, the, the 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 transaction fee. 
I don't pay a monthly fee, and I can wait the three to seven days. All right? So you guys have to wait up for yourself. But that is the episode. That's episode 102 for you. Let me know if that makes sense. Let me know if that makes sense for you, right? If you, if there are other services and solutions that you guys are using, you know, let me know in the comments. Definitely reach out. Let me know what else you guys are using. There's another service called Remitly that I have to check out. Remitly. Haven't checked it out. I will check it out. Again, I haven't. I, I kind of use things and learn about things when I have a need and I implement it within my own operations and then I would come and talk to you guys about it. Um, and if I don't, so case in point, something like a Pioneer or a uh, or Wise, you know, because I didn't have the need for it once upon a time, you know, I wasn't talking about it. But now I have the need and I use it, so I talk about it, you know. So I haven't had a need. I've heard about Remitly. I will definitely check them out. I haven't had a need for it because now all of my bases are covered, but... Um, that's another service I'm seeing people that are using to go and send out invoices and whatnot. So I'll definitely check it out and see what the vibe is, see what it is, and, and kind of go from there, right? But yeah, let me know if there are other payment services that you guys are, are using or looking to check out. And let's have that conversation because we need, we need more people understanding the different payment uh, platforms and tools that we have available because if everybody can learn how to get paid internationally and get paid and receive their money comfortably um then it's going to open up all of our businesses across the region to more uh to, to more to more clients and you're going to get paid and you know if more money is coming into the businesses the better for the entire economy right so that's it for for me for episode 102 if you guys enjoyed the content, please drop a rating. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, any of the podcasts that you guys can rate the podcast, please drop a rating uh, for the podcast. The ratings definitely help grow the show. If you really enjoyed the episode, please leave a review. I read all the reviews. The reviews help to grow the Digipreneur family all across the globe. The reviews help me to, to know of whether we are on track if the content is good, they let me know how you guys are feeling, right, about about the uh, the podcast. So drop a review. The reviews mean a lot to me, um, and it also continues to help to grow the Digipreneur FM podcast family. If you are not following me on over on social media, in the words of Young Bretta, what are you doing? <laughs> Definitely, you guys can go check me out on social media at Karen Rose, K-E-R-O-N-R-O-S-E. I'm on all social media platforms, most active on LinkedIn, Instagram, and my Instagram stories are always lit. I like to show you guys behind the scenes, give you guys a lot of free game over there. I'm active on TikTok, um, Twitter, not so much, but I'm there. And Facebook, I'm active on Facebook as well, all right? So you guys can go check me out over on social media. Don't forget you guys can go visit. Oh, and I also have YouTube. Check out Karen Rowe's YouTube channel. I post a ton of content over on YouTube as well, right? And I got to double down on YouTube as well. Uh, you guys can go check out the KarenRose.com website. Um, a lot of content over there. If you guys need to get in touch with me, if you want to learn all about the services, upcoming events, um, and again, more content. You guys can sign up for the email list, sign up for the notification list so you guys don't ever miss a beat. Um, KarenRose.com, the website. Learn about building your digital presence and monetizing your platforms. And last but not least, you guys can check out the Digipreneur.fm website. Subscribe to the notification list or the email list over there so you guys can stay up to date on all things related to the podcast. All right? That is it from me today, folks. Enjoy your weekend. Happy Saturday and take care. You've been listening to the Digiboss, Karan Rose. We hope your notepad was filled after this episode. Make sure to like, rate, and review the show. The learning doesn't stop, folks. And to make sure you don't miss any gems from the Digiboss, go over and follow him on all social media platforms at Karan Rose. Folks, don't just sit there with a notepad. We need you to implement at least one thing into your business before the next episode. That's the only way your business levels up. Thanks for listening to Digipreneur FM. Now, Go be great.